Audio Control is an innovative Mixcraft feature that lets you use the volume curve of any audio file or live audio to control almost any parameter of an instrument or plugin. If you've ever used the knobs or buttons on a hardware MIDI controller to control parameters, it's very similar except that the parameter amount is controlled by the relative level of the audio. It might sound complicated, but it's actually really easy and super fun to use, and there's lots of creative ways you can use it, so let's dig in. In this example, I'm going to demonstrate a basic way to use audio control. Now, up here I have a break beat, and down here I have some sustained keyboard pads. Now what I want to happen is I want to take the rhythmic feel of this break beat, and I want to impart it onto these pads over here. So we'll start by opening up the audio control window. Now there are a couple ways to get at it, but I found that the fastest way is to click the instrument over here, and this is our impulse synth that we're using for the pads. And then there's this little gear right here. And if you click that gear, this opens up the MIDI and audio control window. Now, usually this defaults to the MIDI tab, and this is where we assign knobs and that kind of thing. That's not what we want right now, so make sure you click on the audio tab right there. So now we have audio control. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to close the instrument preset window up here, which leaves us with the audio control window here. And I'm going to move this over. See where it says show effect up here? This opens up the user interface for the uh, instrument or effect that we're working on. So if I open that up, that's this instrument right here. So the reason why we want to do this is because when we're using audio control, you'll actually be able to see the knob or whatever parameter inside here moving, and it makes it a lot easier to understand what's going on. This will make uh, more sense in a minute when I get audio control actually up and going. So going back to our audio control window over here, the first thing we want to do is select a parameter for the audio to manipulate. So if I click this little down arrow right here, you can see all the parameters. It's kind of going off my view at the bottom, but you can see all the parameters that we can manipulate with audio control. So I'm going to choose filter cutoff, and now I'm going to choose source. This gives a list of all the available audio tracks in the project that you can use for audio control. Now in this particular case, this breakbeat is the only eligible contender because, as you can see, I have no other audio tracks in here. But if I had more audio tracks in there, you would be able to see all of them when you clicked over here. Also, if the audio track is playing, you'll see these little VU meters right here. Another thing you'll notice is when you slide the mouse down here, you get these little sub-menus that say dry, pre, and post. This tells you where audio control is tapping its signal. So in other words, let's say I have this set to dry. Dry means that the audio comes straight from the file and is not affected by the volume on the mixer or any effects or anything in the channel strip. And we can demonstrate this if I click over here and see where the meters are going right now. If I turn this all the way down and we look at this, you can see that the meters are still going. Now prefader is pretty similar to dry, but the signal will play through any effects that are in the insert of the channel. So this would make a difference if you're using, say, compression or limiting or any sort of delays or anything. It will certainly affect the signal and what's going on with your modulation, so it's good to be aware of that. The last option is post fader, and post fader means that the fader volume will affect what's going to audio control. So you can see here, it's playing. See how the meters aren't doing anything? If I turn this up, Now we can see the meter going. All right, so I'm gonna choose dry. and Let's hit play. And let's hit this show effect button so we can see what's happening. And if you look over here, hey, you can see that filter cutoff is flicking up and down pretty quick. The only thing is you're probably not hearing a lot of effect right now. And the reason why you're not hearing much effect is because if you can see that filter cutoff's way at the top of its range. So if we take this value knob over here, this sets the initial value. And as you can see, as I turn it down, that range of cutoff gets less and less. So this is a very important control. Now over here, we have the change percentage, and that's really important as well. If I put this in the middle, it's 0%. And we can see that cutoff knob isn't doing anything. As I turn it up, it moves more and more. Now, if I go to the left, I can have the audio control affect the value negatively. Now it's already all the way down because of this, so it's not doing anything, but if I turn it up, of 
course this is sort of inverted from the beat, so it's rhythmically sounding really strange. So let's get this back to a positive level and turn my value down. You can also see the little green meter here, and this actually is showing how much the knob is getting turned up and down. If I turn this percentage of change down, you can see that green band is moving a lot less. So as you mess with these controls, it's pretty easy to see and hear what's going on, especially if you have the show effect or instrument window open. Now we've got a couple other controls I want to discuss. We've got a curve control here, and this can be switched between linear and logarithmic. And logarithmic sounds a, a little more pronounced. Now this basically is the curve of how the audio level affects the actual knob turning. It's a little hard to explain and a lot easier to illustrate, so have a look at this here handy diagram. And uh, just to impress your friends, you can tell them that logarithmic is much more like your ear hears things. In other words, as things get louder, there's much more of an effect. Whereas linear is just straight up and down across the board, as you can see from that straight line. So we've got a couple other controls here as well. We've got an attack and a release knob, and here's what those do. The attack affects how fast changes in amplitude affect the control amount. So if I put it slow, see how slow that knob is moving over here? It's trying to follow the every hit of the uh, the breakbeat, but it can't do it because the attack's way slower. So if I, as I make it slower, it reacts faster. You can see that it's really moving in time with the beat now. Now the release control is pretty much the same thing, but it's on the tail end. As sounds fade away, the control fades away, as it were. So again, if I make this quicker, everything reacts faster. And this really smooths it out if I turn it way up because it's reacting really slowly. You can also disable audio control temporarily by clicking this little checkbox right here. You can also get rid of audio control for a parameter completely by hitting the X box over here. But we're going to undo that. And over here under parameter, we can add as many parameters as we like. And they can be controlled by any audio track you like in the project. All right, here's another example where I've done something totally different. I've taken our breakbeat and I've put it on another track and I put it at a distortion effect on it. And I'm gonna use this little file right here that I made of me speaking, singing. I like to make a mess. I'm gonna use this spoken file here to control the amount of distortion from a distortion plugin on my breakbeat over here. Again, we wanna open up our audio control window and I'm gonna do this by clicking on the effect this time. Click on the gear over here, and here we have our MIDI audio control window. And again, make sure that the audio tab is selected, because that one's the one for MIDI controllers. That one's the one for audio control. Now, I've already set my parameter here, which is distortion. There's only three parameters on this effect anyway. And my source is going to be that vocal track over here, vocal control. And I've chosen dry. So let's hit play. I like to now to really clearly hear what's going on, I'm going to take this vocal track here, I'm just going to turn it down, and you can actually see that distortion knob flying up and down in time with my audio here. Remember to use this show effect button here if you don't have the effect open. This will actually open up the effect or instrument and make it much easier to see what's going on with audio control. Now, one interesting side effect of using distortion is that when you crank up the distortion, it gets much louder. So in the parts where there isn't much audio, like here, the beat's really, really quiet. So I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to show off using two audio control parameters simultaneously. See this post gain right here? That's the overall volume of things. So what if I added audio control to post gain over here. So I'm gonna use the same control signal. Now, if you remember in the last example, I was explaining where you could set this change percentage to a negative value, and that would turn a control down instead of turning it up every time the audio got loud. So essentially, I'm gonna make this go the opposite direction of the distortion control. This might take a little fooling around to get right.
All right, it's not perfect, but it's pretty close. And I think you can see what I'm going for here, trying to get these guys equalized. So this is just one crazy example of what you can do, but the possibilities are really, really endless. And uh, some things to try are messing around with delays and feedback amounts and delays, compression and EQ craziness. You can do a lot of really, really interesting stuff with audio control and add as many parameters simultaneously as you like. So I think if you experiment with it for a while, you'll see that it's a very, very powerful tool for manipulating audio and making crazy noises.